Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, let's go and let's explore more about Spring Boot Starter Data JPA dependency. Well, let's first understand what is the problem uh, the developer uh, we are facing and what solution this starter dependency offers. Well, consider we are developing a Spring Boot application without using you know this starter dependency. Then what basically we need to uh, you know do is we need to add a lot of dependencies. For example, we need to add JP dependencies, Hibernate dependencies, Spring Data JP dependencies. Along with that, we need to add a couple of Spring you know dependencies as well, right? And as a developer, we need to also manage the compatible versions of all these dependencies. Okay, that is where the problem, you know, developer, you know, need to manage all these things. Developer need to add all the required libraries to develop the persistence layer, the repository layer, and developer need to manage all the compatible versions of all these libraries, right? So that is where, you know, this uh, starter dependency were introduced. So Spring Boot team basically created this starter dependency and this starter dependency internally manage all these libraries and its compatible versions we don't have to add a lot of libraries like jpa dependencies or hibernate or spring data jpa or you know uh, spring based dependencies and yeah so we no need to add all these libraries we no need to manage all the compatible versions of these libraries this starter dependency will take care of you know adding all the dependencies internally and managing the all compatible versions right so that is awesome right we just need to add one starter dependency and it will include all the you know required libraries or the dependencies to develop the persistence layer or the repository layer right so this is basically one stop shop for all the libraries to develop the repository layer or the persistence layer okay now what we're going to do is we're going to deep dive into this dependency and we'll see what this dependency internally provides okay let me go ahead and let me deep dive into this dependency and you can able to see here this starter dependency internally added spring data jpa dependency okay and it, it has already managed the version of this dependency and along with that this starter dependency also added spring framework dependencies spring aspects okay and you can see here this starter dependency also added spring aop dependency for managing the transactions and this starter dependency also provides spring boot starter jdbc dependency internally and look at here couple of jp dependencies okay jakarta persistence api well basically the name has changed from java persistence api to jakarta persistence api and you can see here hibernate dependency all right so this starter dependency will basically include all these required dependencies to develop the persistence layer or the DAO layer so this is awesome right we don't have to add all these required dependencies and it manage its compatible versions so this single starter dependency will take care of adding all the libraries internally and manage the compatible versions okay so whenever you want to develop the persistence layer or the repository layer for any relational databases then you can go ahead and use spring boot starter data jp dependency okay and whenever you add this starter dependency make sure that you also need to add the jdbc driver for example in our case mysql connector java make sure that you add jdbc driver dependency whenever you use spring boot starter data jp dependency in your spring boot application okay great so this is a quick overview of Spring Boot Starter Data JP dependency. In next lecture, we will configure MySQL database in our Spring Boot application so that we can able to connect our Spring Boot application with MySQL server. Alright, I will see you in the next lecture.